I've been a nurse for a long time. I've worked psych a lot. And when you're talking about the pastors and the restoration, but you're not talking about the victims, and you're not talking about the pain that goes on for the rest of their life. So I'm going to tell you something. In my opinion, that kind of abuse, that kind of situation, it's the same as, I must say the word, I've already said another one. It's the same as murder in my eyes. Because you know what you have done as a perpetrator? You have murdered a child's soul. And they will never completely get over that. It doesn't matter how, how much therapy and how many pills. They will never get over it completely. So the fact that you are, you know, not in jail and you're still in position and you're still like people, you're still getting the applause of people that, uh, that your victims are victims forever. Now, a lot of people have a lot of therapy. There's a lot of healing. Yes. Do I understand the deep healing of God? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Because without him, I've told y'all, I don't know where I'd be, but it wouldn't be good. And I wouldn't be doing this. But for those of you that feel like Robert Morris should get a pass, let me ask you this, okay? Have you ever held on to a 12-year-old child who is not just crying, but devastated, gut crying, that has marks all up and down their arms and legs of where they've self-harmed because they feel so much shame? and so much guilt, and they feel useless, and they feel used, and they feel not worthy of anything, and they just can't deal with life because their self-esteem is so low. Have you held one of those children? Have you stood outside of a, a shower because that 12-year-old child is terrified, terrified to go in there because of the things that happened at home or somewhere else in a shower and they have to hear your voice the whole time have you had to physically throw yourself your whole body weight on someone an adolescent who is determined to bash their head into the concrete wall and you have to physically restrain them and hope to God that you can keep them down on the floor long enough for help to get there before they unalive their self Have you experienced any of those things? Because I have. I've sat with people who cannot, they're one-to-one, -one, and you have to chart on them every five minutes because they're either so violent or so hypersexual that they cannot be alone. And every day, day and night, you have to keep your eyes on them. You have to write down what they're doing. You have to follow them from room to room. Anywhere they go, they are so, you never know. They're so explosive. They're one-on-one. -on -one. Have you ever been the victim of an essay? Have you ever doubted your self-worth? Have you ever felt dirty, shameful, like you were good for nothing? Did you ever feel like you would never get anywhere in life? And you just wanted to end it. That there, that there was no point in going on. Because the pain is so great. Have you ever been that victim? Because I have. I have. And I want to tell you something. If it wasn't for the grace of God. I've said it over and over. I wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't have my sanity. So don't you tell me. That a lifelong situation. A lifelong triggers don't you tell me that that victim is not going to be a victim in some way forever now i don't consider myself a victim <laughs> no i don't but do i still have triggers sometimes out of the blue yeah i sure do you tell me that pastor can sit down for a month even a year he should still stand up in pastorship when you have murdered the soul of a child? Because I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. 
but you'd be better with a maelstrom around your neck. But thankfully, Jesus doesn't require that because of his grace and love. Look, if that's what he said the punishments should be, then you should be overwhelmed with grace. Because Jesus is not going to do that. He said, that's what you deserve. But God isn't going to do that. God is going to love you. He's going to forgive you. And he's going to restore you to himself, no matter what you've done. But restoring you to himself does not mean that you are restored to position. Understand. There's forgiveness and there's justice. And there's two, they're two different things. I understand why people are running from the church in droves. Why would they? Why would they be in church when the church acts worse than the world? At least the world will put you in jail for being a chomo. We don't even do that. We're just like, eh, God forgives. It's money and power that makes these people, they don't want to resign. If y'all want to know what true integrity looks like, True integrity would step down willingly and say, I am now disqualified and I am so sorry. I'm going to make every bit of restitution I can to this person for the rest of my life. And that person would not even entertain the thought of being back in that kind of leadership.